Hey folks, Steve-O here again, coming at you from the Garage of Evil. And the reason why is a, a good friend of mine said, Hey, are you going to do a how-to on how to breadboard up a ULN so we can power 12-volt devices, uh, for instance, off of um, our pickaxe? And uh, I said, well, yeah, I, that's on the list. Um, and then I realized I just didn't feel like writing up a huge how-to again. So I said, you know what, time to break out the video camera and we'll just sort of do this one live. Uh, without a net, more or less, and see how it goes. Um, so before we start, there's a couple of things on this breadboard that you need to know about because you may not have yours set up this way. Uh, number one, um, here is my pickaxe. Uh, number two, here is a ULN 2803A. Um, this also has polarity. You can see a notch right there, but you probably can't, but there is one. Um, most importantly, one difference from my breadboard setup to yours, if you've been following along with the how-tos, is I've built a... Um, a little 5 volt voltage regulator here and over here I've used a, a 2 pin header and go into a 12 volt wall warp so essentially what this does is this side of my breadboard is running 12 volts you'll see that I've only connected the ground um, it's a common we need to connect ground that's fine um, but I've not connected um, the forward voltage from this side of my breadboard to this side of my breadboard if I did I would blow things up and that would be bad um, so what I'm do actually doing here, and you may not be able to see it that clearly, is I'm running um, my 12 volts and jumping that over to the input pin over here of a 7805 regulator, and that regulator will drop me down to 5 volts um, regulated power. Um, and then I've, you know, I've wired up the, um, the ground pin to ground and the output pin um, to my positive rail on this side of the breadboard. And this effectively gives me 5 regulated volts on this side, which my pickaxe loves. And on this side, I've got 12 volts. So with that done, we're ready to begin. Um, if you don't have that set up, that, that's fine. Just make sure that you're not connecting your breadboard, that you've got it separated except for ground here. Um, and, you know, hack it any way you need to just to get started and so you can get a better setup. Uh, God knows this isn't ideal. Um, and just get yourself 12 volts on this side and 5 volts on this side. Or even if you have to use the battery, that's fine too. Whatever. Um, one other quick difference is you'll notice that I don't have my little download circuit that you've seen and the reason why is I'm very comfortable making that circuit now and um, Pete the GOE's own resident mad scientist was kind enough to buy this little breadboard kit for me and you can get this it's a few bucks at sparkfun.com and uh, you put it together yourself with your soldering iron and it gives you a, a nice little pull on pull off breadboard friendly um, download circuit so that said let's get going now alright so the ULN is of course an integrated circuit um, what it actually is inside the little black bar here is, is a eight transistor array essentially so we've got eight, eight transistor channels um, and there's a diode in there to prevent uh, back feed um, but so it's, it's essentially the same as having um, eight different transistors it just comes in this array uh, makes things a lot easier for us uh, probably a terrible way to explain it but basically what we're going to use it for in practicality for this exercise is we're going to use it to buffer um, the high voltage from my pickaxe, we're going to use it to switch 12 volts. So, um, like every other IC, the ULN 2803 has its own pinout. And if you go to, I believe it's manual 3 of the pickaxe, you can actually see the pinout. Now, I've already done that, so I know that this pin right here needs to go to ground. So I'm going to make that connection now. Um, here is my ground connection. I'm going to just bring that over here. And then I know that this pin over here is V plus or positive voltage. So I am going to bring that over to my positive rail like so. And this IC is essentially ready to go. Um, the way this works is, it, and of course we orient ourselves by the notch, is this is my input side. So in other words, my pickaxe pins, the output from my pickaxe pin is going to go to the corresponding, to a, no, I shouldn't say corresponding, but to a pin here. And then the other side of that that would be the corresponding pin, is where the 12 volts out is going to be switched. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from B.4, and let me make sure it's B.4. I'm going to look at my pickaxe pin out, and it is this pin right here is B.4, and I'm going to run that to the input side of this ULN right here, which means that my corresponding output pin on the ULN will be the one directly across from it, which is this one. Now, I've got right here, you can see that, there it is, um, a 12 volt pneumatic solenoid um, from Monster Guts, as a matter of fact. Um, longtime friend of the Garage of Evil and often a sponsor during the busy season. 
uh, Dean, this is going to cost you five bucks just so you know ahead. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put this into my positive rail because we're essentially switching ground when we're using this setup. I'm going to put this into the negative rail like that. All right, so now we're all wired up. Um, again, um, my positive lead heads to the positive rail. Um, I'm going to use this to switch ground over here. So I went to that. Right there. This is really just this simple, folks. I hope if it works. Um, and I'm going to go into my pickaxe program editor and write a very simple program just to prove that we've got it working right. I'm just going to create a label. I'm going to call it main. I'm going to say hi, b.4. I'm going to tell it to pause for about half a second, pause 500, low, b.4. Pause again, create a cycle. I'm going to send it right back to main. And so I've got main, my label. Turn b.4 on, wait half a second, turn it off, wait half a second, go back to main, rinse, repeat. I'm going to hit program, and if I did this right, and God knows there's no guarantee of that, um, you're going to hear that solenoid click on and off in just a second. And of course, if we had air running through here, that would be uh, moving a cylinder for us. So let's just wait, we're just about done here, and hopefully we should hear the clicking. And there it is. That is our solenoid turning on every half a second or so. Um, and that's that. It's just that easy to use a ULN. Um, so I'm going to turn this off for a second just so we don't hear that clicking noise the entire time. There we go. And it really was that simple. I, I turned this pin, B.4 high in the pickaxe, to the input of the ULN, and then from the output side of the ULN, which is now switching 12 volts, um, I used my ground connection over here to the output pin, and then ran to the positive rail with the positive. Um, so this is how we take um, our low, you know, 20 milliamp um, 4.5 volt output from the pickaxe and use it to switch a much higher current, higher amperage device um, like this 12 volt um, 500 milliamp pneumatic solenoid. And that's that in a nutshell, folks. Um, I hope that helped, and uh, hopefully uh, you try it yourself. Bye.